सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली ऑन गोइंग टर्मोइल ऑन लिबरल अमेरिकन कैंपस University of Pennsylvania Elizabeth McGill she's resigned on the eve of the meeting of her board of trustees which was to take a call on her future now by she's resigned the board at Harvard University however finally uh, they they thought through it overnight but finally they decided to not ask Claudine Gay to leave as president she continues in her job and she meanwhile put a little apology or note on note of apology on Harvard Crimson as well Sally Kornbluth Sally Kornbluth is the president of MIT so these are the three topmost among the three topmost american universities all three are in turmoil why all three are in, all three are in turmoil because they saw they saw angry protests by pro palestinian and anti israeli students on their campuses after after october 7 in some cases on some campuses even before the israeli attacks on on gaza started there were celebratory rallies also after hamas's attacks oh, it's a combination of all of that and then then the congress decided to hold hearings for several hours of day to ask these presidents how come they did not take any action against students who were carrying out these rallies and who were saying and doing things that the jewish students and faculty might have found might have found offensive or or to use that expression that is that that that, that describes it more precisely anti-semitism anti-semitism is, is is the hatred or the dislike of people who come from one seat one language one culture however 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 many countries they might originally come from it's a, it's a loose translation but essentially today anti-semitism means hate of the jews or hate speech about the jews or policies directed against the jews that is antisemitism targeting them for their religion their faith and their culture that's antisemitism so the presidents of these key universities faced charges from really really angry and and i, and I would say very well homework so it, in the american system of english you can you can make a verb out of anything for example one verb i am seeing all the time in this debate is lawyer so i am so i am reading that the defenders of these three presidents who made a mess of their hearings or their testimonies their defenders are saying that they were over lawyer they were lawyer too much so if somebody can say over lawyer i can also say very well on board so these congress members were very well homework and they asked tough questions so the questions that got these presidents into trouble were quite basic so the same questions were repeated to all three of them i can repeat for each one i can just i can just give you the example from one so this is congresswoman elise stefanik elise stefanik is a republican congresswoman from new york she is asking in this case Elizabeth Magill of University of Pennsylvania the one who's resigned the only one who's resigned question that she asked for example Elise Stefanik asked Elizabeth Magill identical questions were asked of the other two of Conbluth and and Gay as well so number 1 is calling for genocide of Jews does it does does that constitute bullying or harassment Magill responded and i quote from the testimony if it is directed and severe per, and pervasive then it is harassment the stefanik asks again so the answer is yes magil says it is a context dependent decision congress woman stefanik then says sort of explains that's your testimony today calling for genocide of jews is depending upon the context right and that and other other hearings also the difficult parts of other hearings also went in the same direction in fact in the hearing with claudine gay the harvard president congresswoman stefanik republican party and and a harvard graduate herself and i'll tell you a little bit about her she in fact said to her 
you should resign you must resign so this is a congress woman in a congressional hearing in a congressional testimony asking the president of harvard to resign she hasn't yet done so she hasn't been fired yet as well although there are demands there are demands and there are campaigns in fact 17 members of the congress 70 members of the congress cutting across party lines that is in a bipartisan way 70 members of the congress have, have signed a joint statement a joint statement condemning the performance of these three presidents elizabeth mekel resigned on the eve of the on the eve of his of her board of trustees meeting shortly after announcing her resignation the chairman of the board scott block scott l block he resigned as well so university of pennsylvania now has a now has an officiating chairperson who will who will not be there for long she cannot be there for long because she's also the chair of a large Jewish organization, a respected large Jewish organization as well. Now, what is it that the chairman of the board, the chairperson of the board, has said at UPenn about about Elizabeth Megill's resignation or her departure? He says, and I quote: "She was worn down by months of relentless external attacks. She was not herself last Tuesday. Tuesdays when the hearings took place, she was over prepared and over lawyered." given the hostile forum and high stakes she produced a legalistic answer to a moral question and that was wrong right and then he goes on to say she made it made for a dreadful 30 second sound bite in what was what was more than 5 hours of testimony in any case in any case elizabeth megill lost her job what did stefanik say congresswoman elise stefanik she says one down two to go and i quote again from her she says this is only the very beginning of addressing the pervasive rot of antisemitism that has destroyed the most prestigious higher education institutions in america this forced resignation of the president of pennsylvania university is the bare minimum of what is required the fact however is which also must be stated that elise stefanik is a harvard graduate not only is she a harvard graduate but as a harvard graduate who who achieved some position in public life she was also a member of the harvard institute of politics and that's where she was turfed out because of the position she took on the last presidential election in america you know what happened on the tamasha with trump not accepting defeat she took that position in fact she is known to be somebody who used to be rather on the calmer side of the republican party but turned on fully on the maga side of make america great again side and that's the reason she also got tossed out at harvard and she might be carrying some of that anger as well in fact on her social media handles in place of alma mater instead of saying harvard university she now just says caving to the woke left so we need to know that background as well now this performance by these presidents it brought to head something that had been building that had been building for some time a lot of the donors at of these universities happened to be jewish at the same time a lot of the donors also happened to be very liberal liberal also donors of, of the democratic party but this outburst on liberal campuses has upset them as well so this has this has bridged the divide between left and right when it comes to those who contribute to these campuses so if you see a upen for example <coughs> mark rowan who, who who runs apollo global management a big firm with a lot of money and a big contributor to this university and many more he's been giving calls to donors to pull out their money not only is he influential here and a contributor he's also the chair of the wharton advisory board wharton as we know is the business business college run by pennsylvania university university of pennsylvania then ronald lauder ronald lauder is the lauder in st lauder the high fashion brand he has been talking about pulling out his money and ross stevens who owns a big hedge fund he has already announced that he is pulling out 100 million dollars of donations from pennsylvania university in protest against rising antisemitism and the inability of the university to control it or to or to punish students and others who might be guilty of it now this has got faculty worried everywhere because faculty at u pen as faculty at harvard mit and other liberal campuses they also value their academic freedom they don't like the idea of their presidents now being thrown out or being muscled out under funders pressure but that has now become a reality and as you would expect this has also 
opened the flanks of these liberal campuses to the republicans because all this while the republics republicans have been chasing republicans have been seeing republicans in the american right they've been seeing these campuses as the hope of the woke left which is fundamentally and deeply opposed to them which in their view even dehumanizes them after all somebody did call trump's people the deplorables isn't it so they've now got an opportunity to hit back i read an article from nicolas confessor in new york times and i will share many of these articles with you you can read these at leisure and he says in that article that so far the republican right had seen with some dismay a decade upon decade this thing building up so first decade was decade of political correctness then the decade of social justice and now wokeism and initially or until now they might have thought because they had tried using it in their campaigns the business of woke left on campuses but they said not found great popular support and they had pretty much got tired of it and had given up on it so they might have thought that these were just academic fads or harmless zeal but now they see and i quote that outbreaks of campus anti-semitism is a symptom of radical ideas that they long warned about so they've got an opportunity and they think that this is an opportunity for them to change the script that's where that's where there is a quote from representative or, or congresswoman virginia fox who's a republican from north carolina and virginia fox says and i quote what i am describing is a grave danger inherent in assenting to the race based ideology of the radical left and again she goes on to say and i quote institutional antisemitism and hate are among the poison fruits of your institutions culture so it is a attack now on the liberal campuses woke culture interesting thing is in this case while the republicans you would expect them to be angry even the democrats have joined in so president joe biden spokesman or the white house spokesman andrew bates and he said quite emphatically and unequivocally and this is the white house spokesman he said it's unbelievable that it needs to be said calls for genocide are monstrous and antithetical to everything we represent as a country that is the white house spokesman and the president as we know is a democrat then there are others of the democratic side in fact on the business leaders leader side among business leaders both on the left and the right are now speaking up now to understand what exactly has been happening and how we got here listen to or read farid zakaria in his latest column i i will share both versions with you the text version as well as the video version i will only paraphrase from it and tell you a few highlights and i think we make some very sound and very interesting points points which should be debated he says for example quoting from author researcher opinion maker paul duff who's written a famous book the inequality machine how college divides us it's a, it's a, it's a best seller in america please check out his twitter page and also the jacket of his book he says he says that today among young adults the sex appeal of college campuses college education is really declining and one reason that's declining is because of colleges have lost their way they've now become so obsessed with political correctness and dei diversity equity and inclusion as to forget their main calling their more important calling in 2013 74% of young adults in america wanted college education it was so competitive by 2019 that number had already come down to 41% in 2018 61% Americans said that higher education in America was heading in the wrong direction only 38% said it was headed in the right direction 2016 70% of high school graduates were going to college by at this point only 61% was so percentage is coming down and that's why american campuses are losing their market in America and then Farid Zakaria goes on to say that that these campuses have been ignoring excellence for too long instead they've been getting caught up in a variety of agendas and these agendas are mostly diversity and inclusion he also quotes data presented in a supreme court hearing in America and that that's been a famous supreme court judgment in America and that evidence showed that these campuses these institutions have systematically downgraded merit in favor of racial quota so that's like saying reservations in the indian context in place of merit so even a simple meritocratic examination like sat sat scores everybody knows about many of the universities are in fact pushing back at the supreme court 
and saying that they will even do away with sad scores and find another way of admitting students on their campuses. Again, Farid Zakaria says that humanities are now getting dominated by race and gender subjects and, and studies about marginalized groups. And those teaching those areas get faculty jobs. Those, those researching those areas get fellowships. And in fact, I'll quote a line from him. He says, a white man studying US presidency will have a very tough time, has hardly any chance, it's rare of a chance of getting tenure at a major history department in America. Again, he says that in humanities departments on American campuses, there's been massive grade inflation. So at Yale, for example, he says the median grade in humanities departments at Yale is A. And many people, many people can now, many students can now major simply in DEI, that is diversity, equity, and inclusion. An entire bureaucracy has risen or grown around the DEI idea, and they've now become self-perpetuating. And in the process, political diversity has vanished from American campuses. Then, then the example used is that after the George Floyd incident and protest, most campuses took a position. That was a political position. It was seen as a politically correct position, but they took a position. But again, and Farid says he does not remember any campus taking such a position over 9-11 or even over the war in Iraq. And that is the reason, because they've taken this position over, over a period of time and they've gone so far and become so obsessed with what they define as political correctness at the, at the expense of political diversity that they are now squirming at these hearings. And the conclusion is that because of decades of politicization, Top colleges in America have become no longer are no longer bastions of excellence. They've become partisan outfits. What you're seeing right now is a commotion, a big debate, a big controversy in that environment. Among those who've spoken out is Sam Altman, who all of you know very well, OpenAI artificial intelligence big boss, and he's one of the major donors to Democratic Party as well. He has said, and I quote, he's, he's, he's said this on social media, and I quote, for a long time I said that anti-Semitism, particularly on the American left, was not as bad as people claim. I'd like to just state that I was totally wrong. Now, two things have happened because of, the, of, because of these protests. One, there were celebratory rallies after the Hamas October 7 attacks. That made it very difficult for, for progressive Jews, progressive Jews who had made common cause with the other progressives of the left, because these were progressive Jews who did not particularly agree with the policies and views of many of Netanyahu's very hard right kind of coalition partners. So it made them defensive now because they didn't know where to look because their liberalism came under question. And also they began to question their own allies on the side of the liberal left. Because if they were now, if they were not, not standing up to this anti-Semitism, then what they believed in, the liberalism they believed in wasn't quite right. I'm talking about the about the progressive Jews. The, on the other side, it also drove a wedge among the Democrats, Democrats on the liberal side. So Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook, as we know, Sheryl Sandberg said that, look, I'm disappointed with women's groups who haven't even spoken out when we've seen revelations and stories and evidence that Hamas used rape as an instrument of war in its October 7 attacks. Effectively, what this means is that college wokeism has made a comeback on the U.S. presidential campaign trail. It had disappeared because the Republicans had thought it's not making any sense. It's not finding a wide enough appeal, but it's now back. Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina, she has said, and I quote from her, if you think Israel has no right to exist, it is anti-Semitic. She's, of course, going to say that if she becomes president, then she'll pass a law making it illegal to say, making it illegal to say, or making it punishable or punishable to say that Israel has no right to exist. The wider view in America right now, that is dividing even the liberals, because many of the liberals have also begun to introspect a little bit. And the right, of course, you would expect them to be celebrating this because they now see it as laying bare of the hypocrisy on the liberal left side. And the view is, and this is a view shared by many on the democratic side as well, that for a long time there's been indulgence of left-wing sensitivities around race and gender on campuses. The same campuses and same institutions have punished, have severely punished those 
who were recipients of left anger and what are the examples we can do does an example so i will only tell you a couple it also this article it invite a course so for example harvard deanship as big a position as that harvard deanship was denied to ronald s sullivan junior a black law professor because he joined the legal team of harvey weinstein right this led to protest by students and faculty and he had to he was made to lose he was made to resign his job as to be now the principle in law is the high principle in law is that you should you shall go and defend anybody who needs your professional help but because he chose to do that black harvard university law professor dean lost his deanship because of this 2021 at mit mit cancelled a planned scientific talk by star geophysicist dorian abbott why because dorian abbott's criticism of affirmative action right it's, it's like somebody saying reservation is not a, not a good idea a scientist says reservation is not a good idea so you say the scientist cannot come and give a scientific lecture that's what happened in mit in 2021 u penn law school u penn is the one in question right now u penn law school is seeking to impose sanctions or a ban on a tenured professor amy wax because she made remarks or on the academic performance of students of color again the article gives us data from a survey by foundation of individual rights and expressions that ranks hundreds of colleges and universities in america on the basis of students right students rights and open inquiry harvard and upen rank at the very bottom in terms of students rights and open inquiry that means you can only have one set of views if you have another set of views then then you are out or you are cancelled or you are not accepted that's what this survey shows the foundation director alex more has been quoted quoted as saying that the same administrations are all too willing to censor unpopular stuff on their campuses it is such an utter hypocrisy and once again the public has seen on the opportunity ron desantis the governor of florida and sometimes presidential candidate as well he has in fact started a campaign to defund diversity studies and left left wing race theories on campuses 20 states already 20 american states i presume most of these are republican states if not all they've already withdrawn they've already withdrawn support for dei programs dei stands for diversity equity and inclusion and not only have they drawn support for dei programs they've also drawn support for any identity based hiring practices now we've begun to see some regrets some people who are in the line of fire for mcgill for example although she had to resign mcgill said look i went by the constitution the god of the constitution that speech alone is not not punishable and then she then she goes on to say i was not focused on and i should have been on the irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of jewish people is evil plain and simple she's now saying she should not have equivocated gay Claudine Gay of Harvard University, writing in Harvard Crimson, she said, "I am sorry. Words matter." Elise Stefanik, the Republican Congresswoman, she has written an article for the Wall Street Journal, of which I'll also share a link with you. She says in that article that Harvard, Harvard, will ban students or punish students for cis heterosexism, fat phobia, using wrong, wrong pronouns, but they will not they will not punish students for anti semitism and for abuse and violence on the campus and it she also uses the expression that this ivy league is a poison ivy league she has said that there will be tectonic consequences of this hearing it will be an earthquake in higher education again look at the democratic side sometimes you go back and forth between democrats and republicans because on this one there's a, there's quite a bit of quite a bit of part by partisanship on the democratic side the governor of pennsylvania don shapiro he says in on this issue no nuance that means no nuance is needed no nuance what she said what the president of u pen said was offensive 